awesome. The four of you brought your own mics. You couldn't just share one. Yeah. It's good journalism. You got your own sources. Uh, well, th thank you for everybody for coming today. Um, we got our four esteemed journalists here. I appreciate you making the drive down uh, from Dublin. As you can see, we spent some of our bank balance on a new banner um, in the background with our, uh, you know, our logo and then our new kit sponsor. We thought we'd give them a little extra love because um, I think they, they wrote us two checks and we definitely cash those uh, for the same amount anyway um geo gigan home extensions that's how you say it yep uh thanks for your support today we are going to do an end of season deep dive um we're going to look at the players so make sure you leave a comment on uh who you think the player of the season the young player of the season and the signing of the season are i'm not going to expect you to know what the goal of the season was but you know if you gotta if you gotta guess there Make sure you drop that here. Um, so, you know, we have upgraded our facilities a little bit here. But, uh, you know, you may hear some laundry machines because we're, we're pretty much right next to where the kit man is getting our new kits ready. So, you know, we got we got him in. He's got to, you know, clean them up and get them washed and, you know, get the names on the backs and all that kind of stuff. So if you hear some of that noise, that's uh, that's what's going on there. Um, actually, before, I, I was going to wait to do this, but uh, I'm not. Um I have some really, really exciting news. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll get to the stats, I promise. But uh, Zach O'Neill has signed a new contract. Yeah, we're real. We are pumped about that. Um, but let me. Um, we'll, we'll get to that. I just I'll give you a little nibble there, and then we're gonna we're actually gonna jump in and use some of our our upgraded computer technology to phase into um, you know some of the stats, so you guys can see those instead of my my. Wonderful face. Hold on, hold on, just a second. Here we go. We're we're working on it, you guys. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Okay, I think I think I think we we've got the we got it in. Okay, good, 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 good. Um, so as you can see, I mean, we we, I think we had a good season. Um, bit disappointed how it ended, but you know, for our first season, we're gonna continue to build. That's what we do. Um, so I've got it sorted here by minutes. I I I like this option. Um, to show who you know who was out there as much as possible for us. And of course you got your goalkeeper, but also left back because we didn't, you know, for a good chunk of the season, we, we didn't really have another option at left back. So Kevin Knight with a lot of minutes and actually a pretty good rating for having played so many games for us. And then it kind of drops off there. Connor Keeley playing a bunch, Zach O'Neill, Captain Jack, and so on. Um, average rating, of course, Jack Minton with the, uh, the one sub and one start at some point too. We don't really count that, but Zach O'Neill on a seven, one, four with 30 starts. That is just absolutely outstanding. Marty Waters playing well. Lucas Klukas playing well as, you know, in addition to that. So we had four players in the green. Um, we'd like to improve that for next season, as you might imagine. From a goal scoring standpoint, Lucas Klukas with 16 goals, nine assists, doing a great job. Really, honestly, you know, based on the opinions of, well, some of you, right? But the uh, journalists here in attendance, um, punching above his weight, you know based on his current ability and his potential ability. So 16 goals, 9 assists is absolutely outstanding, especially when you consider we played him in a pressing forward role, which wasn't his most known role. He's, he's come into that very well for us. Uh, Marty Waters, not far behind, 13 goals, 9 assists, just doing a fantastic job. Finished the season strong as well on a 7.3. Of course, one of those games was, like, really high in the rest. Anyway, um, Zach O'Neill, again, the young lad, the 18-year-old, 5 goals, 5 assists absolutely outstanding and then it kind of drops off from there but i think we uh we had a good season uh for sure so let me let me we're, we're gonna use our fancy technology here we're gonna go back to our press conference room hold on just a second so the, those end of season awards that that you've uh you've you were all guessing in your journalistic notes um fans player of the season it was a close one it's probably the closest i've seen zach o'neill with 34 percent marty waters with 28 percent and lucas Klukas with 24 percent absolutely outstanding and really you know three of the four players or, or was it all three players with a uh okay we had three of the four uh players with a green average rating the other one being jack minton who played in two games so um the, the three players that performed uh, really well for us are are got all the votes for the fans player of the season um zach o'neill had the goal of the season gary o'neill was the signing of the season which is a bit interesting because he didn't he didn't know i mean he played some games but he didn't play that. I mean, he, you know, two starts and 10 subs on a 6-8-1 with two goals and an assist. And that gets you signing of the season. Maybe that's an indicator of the other signings. Um, and then the young player of the season, to no one's surprise, was Zach O'Neill. Um, 
in addition to that, Zach, like I said, has signed a new contract. It's 150 a week on a three-year deal. Yeah. Yeah, we had him over for dinner. You know, we had some conversation about the future of the club. He just wanted to make sure we would get into the promotion playoff sometime in the next few seasons. And I was like, hey, Zach, we just did that. We'll do it again. And he was like, done. Three-year deal. Now, I was a little concerned. You know, we're we're heading into, um, we're in you know, the middle of preseason and all that kind of stuff. We actually have a have a game later today um, against Athlone Town. Um and his physical attributes coming back from the winter break, I mean, he, he, he ate a lot of pie, I guess is all I'm going to say. His, you know, his agility, his jumping reach, his natural fitness, some flair, concentration, and vision all went down a little bit. But his bravery went up. So he was really brave how he went after those pies. But he's, again, he's signed on a, on a three-year deal, 2021. 2020, I'm just, I'm beside myself with joy. Beside myself with joy. Um, we're going to go through the next few sections, kind of grouping things together to make it a little bit easier to understand. Um, from an award standpoint, Zach O'Neill had the second and third best goals of the of the season for the entire first division, which is really impressive. Um, Stephen McGinnis was the second best keeper, and I was the second best manager. You know, the the keeper and the manager for UCD were you know better because they got promoted, of course. Um, we've increased our club stature. Um, up oh, there's those laundry machines again. Sorry, they're they're getting those kits ready. Got to get those things ironed on there. Um, we're now the fourth best local reputation team in Ireland. Um, we're about, so that, I mean, theoretically means we're, we're like one step away from having a regional reputation. We're still half star, but we're getting there. We were the biggest overachievers in the league, finishing five places above expectations. We were expected to finish eighth and we finished third. I think that's a good achievement. Thank you, board, for cutting my contract down. <laughs> Not better. Um, but despite that, the media... The four of you with these microphones expect us to finish seventh this season. I'd like to talk to you after this press conference about that. What, what the, I mean, low expectations, fine. We'll, we'll knock them out of the water again. Um, but because of how we performed this season, I took a bit of a risk and I told the board the expectations this season was to reach the promotion playoff, which is really like top half plus one. But that's what we went with. Um, I'm hoping this will inspire the lads and not put pressure on them when they're expecting a you know, mid-table finish. Maybe they'll, they'll have higher expectations when we get to the end of that season. You know, we can grind out some of those results and maybe not collapse because of our, our mental standpoint. Um, let's see. Uh, from a staff standpoint, we've re-signed our fitness coach, uh, our head physio, and our physio. Um, don't tell them. It's because... We didn't find any better options, but uh, we're really glad that they're here for another season. Um, we did sign a new assistant manager because our, our last one said uh, we weren't going to be good enough for him. So good luck finding a job. Um, and we got a new U19 coach. Um, nothing too exciting, to be honest with you. Um, we have, um, you know, lost some players during the during the winter transfer window. Dean Casey and Owen Stokes first signed non-contract contracts with, with us which was really going to help us help us out from a wage budget standpoint and then they both left to the Finn harps uh, for the exact same thing so they took non-contract contracts with the Finn harps instead of a, i guess they might get more playing time there i don't know uh we've loaned out a youngster um someone named uh monaghan C cabin I, I i'll show him to you later somebody actually wanted to pay his 35 euro a week and we were like that helps out the wage budget thank you very much um or the finances either one um we've we um we were really disappointed with how shane costello performed um pretty much the entire season and so i listed him uh transfer listed him and uh, he got upset and we talked about it and nobody came in for him so he's still here we're, we're really glad shane costello is here to be a right back for us um we've also signed a 19 year old target man an, another striker um we've loaned some players from the pr premier division i'll show those to you here in a second but essentially we've loaned a right back hey shane um a center back a midfielder and an attacking mid so kind of mostly up and down the spine with a little bit of coverage on the right um carl Byrne, finn mcgowan and Adam Doyle have all signed non-contract contracts, which, again, helps us out. So as long as they stick around the club, they give us a little bit of depth, and they don't cost us any money, which is good. Um, we cut Fitzpatrick, McGee, Ma Adam Maher, and uh, and Chris Turner. Just uh, we wish them the best of luck and thank them for their support uh, of, and, uh, of the club. Um, 
At the end of the season, we are going to be losing Gary O'Neill. He's announced his retirement, so this is kind of his send-off season. And uh, also our head of youth development slash chief scout. So that's a bit nervy because, you know, when you got one person doing two jobs, it's kind of nice. Again, finances really helps out with that. Um, speaking of finances, let me, let me, we're going we're gonna to transition back to our fancy screen here. Hold on just a second. Oh, there he is. Hi, Zach. Love you. Okay, um, I guess I'll show you the signings first. I, I mentioned there that we brought them in, but I didn't show who they were. Um, so the one we actually signed, you know, the actual signing joining our club, is Connor Lang, 19-year-old, six foot one, target man. We've not played with a target man before, but he's got, I mean, decent physicals and all-around, like, decent technicals and mentals. You know, he's not fantastic, but he's 19, youngster. Apparently the second best striker on the team. Um, he's not taking Luka, Lucas Kulkas' spot. 90 a week on a hot prospect contract for a year. Gives us a chance to kind of test him out. Got decent determination. Like, the mentals are, are pretty good, actually, for our level. So we're, we're quite pleased that he's joined us. Um, and then the, the, the loan options. Paul Cleary is a right back. We got him on a rotation. He's 18 <laughs> natural fitness. He, he, he can really move. He's got great physicals. Uh, the defensive aspect, he's really more of a no nonsense, maybe, uh, he provides coverage. At, at this level, we just wanted coverage um, because when you look at the right back option, the one we used for the good part of last season isn't even listed, which is a bit of a bit of a worry. <laughs> um, and Captain Jack is the fourth best one. Not not ideal. Um, Anthony O'Reilly, look at all. That's, uh, love that. Um, on a backup, a uh, 17-year-old from Dundalk, three and a half star, with four or five star potential ability, 17 natural fitness, five foot eight, a little, little on the short side, so he's not going to be jumping up to grab those headers, but uh, advanced playmaker slash attacking midfielder that doesn't do long shots. I, I liked, if you play him in the advanced playmaker role, aside from the dribbling, looks pretty good, looks pretty good, and, and we may have a change in formation that we'll talk about here in just a second. Liam Kerrigan. Um, another backup option in the midfield. I was just trying to beef up our midfield um, to give us some additional options, particularly because our wing play hasn't been fantastic. Um, I wanted to give us another formation where we could utilize our strength. We do have really good midfielders, but if we're going to play that, we need to have rotation options. So um, Liam Kerrigan, again, he can play Mazzali, he can play an advanced playmaker. He's all around, I mean, he's three-star. You know, when you look at the at the ratings, he's the fourth best one we got. So, quite happy that he has joined us as well. And Aiden Nolan, last but not least, I love the whatever he's got going on from a hair standpoint. I mean, that's low. That is, like, really low, son. And then it, it, it looks like it comes down to here on the front side of his ears, but then there's more on the back. I just, I love the look. Love the look. Six foot two, 14 jumping reach. Can play that central defense defend role quite well. Well, rotation contract, but he's got to start. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Connor. Yeah. Connor Keeley is going to lose some playing time because he's fair. He's 17 determination. Fairly determined. 17 years old. We'd love to transfer him. Wasn't part of the loan option, but quite pleased with him. Um, as I mentioned, Dean Casey um, has gone out. Lloyd. Lloyd. Oh, ha, ha, uh, well, that's the name of the club. Uh, Lloyd Dunn has gone out. He's a he, he, two gray star, 35 a week. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Uh, Owen Stokes also went, and then you can see all of the all of the replacements. Aaron McConnell and Chris Turner have, have left of their, I mean, not of their own accord. We, we definitely cut them. Um, so that's, uh, that's what's going on there. Um, Speaking of the tactical change, let me get all my notes up here so I don't forget to cover something with you. So as I mentioned, right, if you go to the squad now, we've got David Casty, four-star midfielder, Andy O'Reilly, he's okay, <laughs> two and a half star. We, we, it gives us some rotation options. Um, Zach O'Neill, we got, um, where is he? Oh no, what have I done with it? Jack Watson, three-star. So, like, our midfield seems really strong. You know, you can put Watson in for O'Reilly. That's fine. Um, or Liam Kerrigan. Or Owen Morgan. We Again, lots of depth in midfield. Our wing play 
has not been fantastic, right? So you, last season we had Joe Doyle, we had Paul Fox. They've got good potential. They just weren't fantastic last season. So I said, you know, what What if teams start picking up on this 4-4-2 thing, long ball that we're doing? We need to have another option. Or in games where we're, like, we're heavily favored, we want to have a more attacking option so we can kind of really take it to teams. And especially with the signing of Anthony O'Reilly at three and a half stars, who is the, pretty much the only player that can take to play the attacking midfield role, but we still want to get our strikers on the field. So I thought, let's do a, a 4-3-1-2. And uh, to go along with that, I, we, last season we had a long pitch. We had 115 by 70 instead of the standard, which is 105 by 68. So we've dropped it to the standard. Dilute, so it's not like we've gone short and really compact or anything like that. We've lost, you know, whatever it is, two yards on the sides and 10 yards on the ends. We can still play that long ball. That's still enough room to play, you know, that counterattacking long ball in situations where we need to. But this gives us a little more, you know, slightly less width if we're only going to have three in the midfield and not on the on the wings. And then we can kind of play, you know, a little more controlling short ball passing um, type situation. So it's a control possession, trying to get our best players on the pitch. Uh, I've got Gary O'Neill in there right now, um, but but that doesn't mean Klukas. It's just Klukas is suspended, you know, and we've kept um, Jean-Yves Poam as, around as well. He's got potential. I don't know if he's going to reach it, but he's got potential. Um, so, yeah, this gives us a essentially a second slash third formation, right? We've got 4-4-2, counterattack cautious. We had – we're going to try this as well, 4-3-3, a little more aggressive um, from the wing play, um, which can also transition down to a 4-5-1, as you saw last season, and then the 4-3-1-2. Now, finances. Let's talk about that. Currently, we're sitting on 54 grand, but how did we get there, right? How did this happen? So the squad bonus that we paid out last season, um, it was 12K, tanked our finances back to where we started, and then it got worse. Um, but then I got a message that said that thanks to, I'm reading this, obviously, if you could tell where I'm looking, that thanks to better than expected finances, they were increasing the, like the, uh, the track, the, the, the transfer revenue retained to 30%, which was very confusing. My washing machine is about to take, I mean, our washing machine with the kits is about to take off. Um, so we dropped down to like 13 grand in the bank. We paid 12 K in tax, but then we got a new kit sponsor. I'll show you that additional kit sponsor for 9.5 K a season. Plus the main kit, which was almost double what it, the message said it was going to be. Again, Geo Hagen or whatever it is, home extensions. Thank you. Um, so it was weird. We dropped a 13k. We played, paid 12k in tax, got a new kit sponsor, and then an additional random 35 grand showed up under other. I don't know why. Um, we'll also get 30k throughout the season for TV revenue, but that's like it's doled out as games come up. Which is interesting because I don't remember that last season. Let's actually go look at that. Income last season. Did we get... I guess we did get... Okay, sure. I just didn't notice. Watch the books very carefully. Um, Bohemians, our affiliate, set up a, set up a friendly with us. Which, I, I, again, maybe this is just a thing in FM. I thought it was a bit odd because it said zero in income. Um, but 992 people showed up. So, surely that just means... Maybe it's like... It, that's match day income? That should be gate receipt income. Like, the, the deal is that we get to keep all the gate receipts. I just think it's weird that it shows up and says, you're not going to get any income out of this, but you are because gate receipts. Um, they're not paying us directly as, like, a fee, but anyway. Um, so, if you're new around here, one of the things that I do, I'm just getting my notes pulled up out of the way here so I can see the screen, is called the Money League. Um, I do this in pretty much every one of my saves. Um, the idea is, if you're a small club and you're trying to generate revenue, you want to play big clubs as much as humanly possible. You get people coming to your stadium, you get ticket sales, you get match day income. You have to pay a fee and you have to balance that out versus the income that you get. But it, the, the game gives you the, the capability of saying, you know, you pay this fee, you get this income. But you can run a league, which is a three three game, like in a row, um, like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, whatever, where you invite teams and they all play each other in a essentially a group stage, like, and w a one team wins. It doesn't matter who wins. There's no prize money. It 
it's essentially just a bunch of friendlies. But we invited Limerick, Shamrock Rovers, and St. Pat's Athletic. And as you can see, we brought in 23, 2400 people. Um, but... I, you know, forget calling it a testimonial cup or an international champions cup like you see here in America where they bring in like the, the big teams from Europe. Um, I call it what it is. I call it a money grab. So we call it the money league. You know, it's on the t-shirts. Everyone buys the money league. Um, so we bring in the biggest teams that we can that are profitable. Like you can bring in like the reserve teams like Young Ajax, but it doesn't. It's like you pay them 16 grand and you get two grand back. That doesn't do you any good. Um, and, and, and other saves, once you get to a certain point, like in a certain reputation, you can bring really good teams in and that obviously, then you start getting TV revenue on top of the match day revenue, which is really good. Um, so Limerick were just relegated. So we kind of want to test them out. Um, and Shamrock Rovers and St. Pat's athletic before the money league, we had 56 grand, 497 in the bank. It peaks as you go through the games. Um, because it, it doesn't pay the fee to the teams until the end is what I, what I've found. And so you see like all this revenue just, or your income just go, or your bank balance, I should say, I get it right. Eventually go just skyrocketing. Right. And we had up to 83,990 euros. Um, and then it dropped to 62 grand, 137. So essentially we started the season with 54, 663. I'm going to try and have these numbers pop up here and remember to do that. Um, and we netted essentially 5,640. The expectation based off of like in the game over here on the side um, where, it, where you set the friendlies and it shows you the income that you would get was five grand. So we netted 640 more than we expected. Either way, five grand when you've got 50 whatever in the bank is massive. Like, so that got us up to 62 grand. And then obviously as we've gone through more preseason and paid players and staff and all that kind of stuff, it's gone back down. Um we also booked three other friendlies that netted us a total of 4K. Um, and I just wanted to compare. In January, on January 8th of last year, we had 26,077 in the bank. Or no. Yeah. Okay. February 16th of that year, we had 26,692. That's the number. 26,692. On February 15th, a year later, uh, or Feb February 15th, 2019, we had 54,653. That's a difference of almost 28 grand. And you cut my contract down by 75 a week. Come on, man. Come, uh, come on, man. Come. Zach O'Neill signed. That's my happy place. Zach O'Neill has signed a three-year deal. So you can see the... um. The start of the season. So we, we drew with Limerick. We lost to Shamrock Rovers. We drew with St. Pat's Athletic, which was a bit of a surprise, to be honest with you. Um, we played Home Farm, which is just a fantastic name for a team. 5-1. Um, Kevin Knight got a goal. Andy O'Reilly got a, I mean, it was just a smashing. Then we played UCD's, um, whatever that is. Uh, that's called. Oh, no, no. It's, the, it's their other team. It's their reserve squad. The LSL. Someone's already left a comment to say what it is. I can't remember. Um, then we had our, our friendly Bohemians, where we kept all the, the gate receipts. A 4-0 smashing. Now, again, they're under no expectations of playing a great, like, putting out a great squad. But when you looked at the squad, like, the the players are getting paid, like, 500 a week. It ha Surely that's their first team. And we just smoked them. Marty Waters with a brace in the first five minutes. No big deal, Marty. Cody Mulhall getting in there and Keith Dalton. And then we, like... Okay, at halftime, I was like, uh, take everyone out. <laughs> like, let's substitute everybody. Um, so this is how we're going to start the season. We're not going to do it today, but we play Athlone Town and then Kremlin United, who we played last season at a friendly. And we're going to start with the Leinster Senior Cup fourth round because, well, cash money. No, no cash money. Yeah, yeah. I thought that wasn't their income. <laughs> okay, no, this is the one where it's at the end of the season. Or, or, or the final. So wait, maybe we can make another run. Other thing I want to ask you. The EA Sports Cup second round. Last season. Where is it? We started in the first round. And we lost. Why are we now in the second round? I have no idea. Maybe you know. Maybe you know. And then the FAI Cup first round. Starts all the way in August. All right, my friends. Um, so Again, this is our squad. We're we're not we're not abandoning the four four two by any means. This may blow up in my face. Oh, see, this is what happens. Goodness gracious. 
We get we get Anthony O'Reilly and Andy O'Reilly. I never even realized. Um, but this is going to be our option when we're playing a team like Athlon Town that we think we can we can do a little bit better against. Four three one two. The rest of the time we're going to play four four two. So let me know what you think about this. I really appreciate you coming and watching this and hanging out. Um, let me know what you think about Zach O'Neill and everything else that we covered. This is a little bit of a different episode, so hopefully you enjoyed it. Hit the like button. Leave a comment. Thanks for all the patron support. We are one away from my end of year goal of 40, which is unbelievable. Have a good one. Come on, Zach O'Neill.